Hi, and welcome to the Grace Engage podcast. I'm your host, Amaya, and this is the first episode. Um, this will be a knitting, spinning, lifestyle, and faith podcast. Lifestyle really means I'll talk about whatever I want, and that's mostly food because we really like getting good food and making new recipes in this house. I'm Amaya, and I live in Colorado. I'm recently a college grad, and since I do a lot of work in education, like with substitute teaching and teaching art classes, it's officially the start of the summer and um, all the schools are out. And so with all of this time, I thought I would start a knitting podcast. Um, when I came home from college in December, my local yarn shop closed down and it was really sad and it was hard to get plugged back into the community. And I got so inspired by the community that rallies around all of these knitting podcasts like a Homespun House, um, Yarngasm, No More Girls, Junk Yarn. Um, the community just seems so sweet. And the way I picture it, it's like these podcasters are recording voicemails and they're putting them out and leaving them for everybody. And then other podcasters are making more voicemails or people are texting in their texting, they're leaving messages on the comment boards or on the blog posts, and it is so sweet, and so I thought I would try to be a part of that. Um, I hope I have something that is uh, relevant to say, that is fun, that is useful. Um, I really hope to inspire other people um, and just encourage them in the creative life and whatever they want to do. So I hope that as you're watching this, you will join my community and leave me some voicemails or some text messages just um, in the comments or in the Ravelry board that I just started. So this podcast will move pretty organically. I'm not the one to really have sections um, or really run series, but in general, I will start with my knitting, what I've been working on, what I've been finishing, um, and then move on to just what's going on in my life. Um, which I also like to share. I consider myself a minimalist, um, pretty frugal, a foodie for sure. And I know all of those have um, kind of niche communities that I also really like being a part of. And then at the end, I will um, likely start talking about faith, whether it's um, what we've talked about in church or something that I thought about while I was reading the Bible. But I will save that for the end. I know it's not everyone's cup of tea, and I don't want to put anyone off. So just like some podcasts leave their yarn, um, their shop updates for the end, I'll leave that for the end, just so you're able to um, sign off and hear all the rest of the stuff before that. Um, and I hope this will be a weekly podcast. I'm sorry if this is all up in the air, because it is all up in the air for me. I've never podcast before. Um, so stick with me, please join the community and enjoy it if you like it. I also have a blog called Grace Engage that will have, um, just more in-depth discussion of the knitting projects that I've done, um, reviews and more lifestyle stuff. Some things coming up are, um, books for my summer reading list and, um, some of my favorite things that I've found on the internet this month, like articles and shows. So we'll go ahead and get into it. I have works in progress. I am a pretty monogamous knitter, and so I'm only working on two things right now. And they, most of the time I go through projects a lot faster, especially considering I've had so much free time. But these have been a beast, and I'm going to show you why the first one, um, the, um, without giving away all the secret stuff. Here's what's going on, and you can see the colors. I have, I started out with the 40 inch because my gauge was small and I, it, it didn't take long for me to realize that that was going to be too big. And so then I went down to the 36 inch and, um, oh, I'm sorry, this is the Admiral's Knot Halter by Ashley Rao. It was in, um, it was in a knit scene, no, in a Nareve's Knit in summer 2013. And I just thought it was beautiful. There's a really nice cable detail and I don't have a picture of it right now. So I went down to the 36 and I got up to the bust area in the knitting and that took 
week. And I tried to, I put it on some yarn and I tried it on and it was just going to be too loose. And I am a minimalist. I have a capsule wardrobe. I'm really picky about my clothes. And I knew that if I had this tank top, be spending many, many hours on it. And if it was, if it was not a good fit, I just knew I wouldn't wear it and I would be, it would just be a really sad thing and it wouldn't enhance my wardrobe at all. Um, so I ripped it out and I started the 32 and a half inch bust, which according to my gauge, it shouldn't fit, but it will because the, the 36 inch was a lot bigger than it needed to be. And so I felt like I was on the right track. I had some cold feet about it. And um, so I strategized and I took it as my only project on a recent five day weekend trip. And so I got pretty far on it. Um, and when I, it, it has decrease, it has like an hourglass shape. And so it has a bunch of decreases um, right off the start. And I was counting all of the stitches to make sure that I either had one decrease section to go or none at all. And as I was counting them, I have my little stitch markers to show the, the sides. I had six more stitches on one side, like on the back side or the front side, it didn't matter, but six more stitches on one side than the other. And this wasn't because I did the decreases wrong. This was simply because I couldn't count two of the same amounts twice while I was, after I had cast on and put on the stitches, the stitch markers. And oh, I don't know what's going on with this project. I don't know why I keep having trouble with it. So I scooted, I scooted the stitches around because now I'm doing, it's got an hourglass shape, but now I'm doing the increases and they're just, if the decreases go up this line, the increases kind of whoop, scoop and go up another line. I don't think it'll be too bad. You know, I get I get like five dollar t-shirts at Target. They're good layering pieces. And every now and then those have kind of a wonky seam. I I always try them on. Um but this isn't a five dollar t-shirt from Target. This is my knitting. I really don't have the heart to tear it back. This yarn has gone through so much and it's it gets a little bit it's cotton, it's 100% cotton, so it just gets a little bit um, bendy, and I just don't want to, I don't want to keep knitting it like that. So I am plowing through, and I'm happy with the progress, and I can already tell it's going to be a better size, so hopefully within the next month I will have that finished object to show you finally. Um, the other crash and burn that happened, and I figured this would happen, well, this was in two parts, actually. I am knitting the Gladys Sock by General Hog Buffer, and um, I am so grateful for all of those free patterns by General Hog Buffer. They are innovative sock designs. They're so cool. They work for such a variety of yarn, and they're all free. So thank you so much. That is awesome. Um, so this is um, a Gansey-inspired sock. And it has a beautiful heel. I love that the pattern kind of follows down the heel and it has a nice seed stitch gusset right there. And it's, I love the seed stitch. It's my favorite stitch. And it's just beautiful. And so I was so happy making this. And um, well, here's the first problem. I have this much yarn left and it's pretty loosely packed and I still have to knit most of the foot. So I'm not going to have enough. And the only reason the sock is so made, um, even though I don't have enough yarn, is because I took it with me while I was subbing one day, a full day. And it was around 10 o'clock in the morning, I realized it's not going to work. But I had no other knitting and I was there until 315 and the kids were so good. I just told them what to do and they just did it and no one really um, needed any help. I mean, it's the end of the school year, too. So I just was able to knit on these, knitting for the sake of knitting, knitting on these socks that I knew I was going to rip out later. Um, so that's why they're, they're so made, and I guess it was good practice. The other thing that happened is, here's, here's the other sock, mostly made. In fact, here's the other sock right before I divide for the heel. And this happened because I cast these on two at a time on one circular needle, which was my favorite way of making socks when I first started. And um, I neglected to look through the pattern because the pattern had the statement, move 
three stitches from needle four to needle one. And that is death for two at a time on one circular needle knitters because we cannot move anything from the needle, needle four to needle one because they're simply not connected on the cables. And so I had to take off the second sock in order to put this one now by itself on a circular needle. So for the redo, I'm definitely going to just use double points. I like double points more now. And has this happened to anybody that you switch your technique? Um, now I love double pointed needles. I have a couple sets and I just, I think they look so much nicer. It's, it's such a cleaner knit. And for me, it's a lot faster. So those are my two projects that I'm working on and that um, just won't, just won't quit. Just won't finish either. Um, I will talk about, and by the way, if you might notice this, I pulled, oh, here we go, Gladys. I pulled Gladys out of this bag. I will never really show you my project bags because they're not project bags. This is a pencil bag that I got from who knows where, and it works. A lot of my other knitting, if I don't travel with it, is just in a little, um, cloth storage cube that I keep around my house. So I'm not a big project bag person. I'm sure if I had them, I would use them a lot and I would think they're really adorable. But um, for now, I I just spend my money on other stuff. And I, I don't make my own, even though I have a lot of nice cloth. So last weekend, I went to Spokane, Washington to graduate. I finished my degree. I finished all my requirements in December, which was early. Um, and then I debated a lot whether to go back and walk with my class at commencement. And I'm so glad I did. It was so fun to see everybody. And we have family in Spokane. It was also really great to see them. Um, it didn't, it didn't really feel like a, a silly ceremony or a way to get closure. I've already, um, pretty much detached, moved on. I wasn't feeling that sentimental about the school, but I am very close to um, my friends and the people who I studied abroad with and my um, professors, and it was so good to see them. And I think it's just, that's just part of relationship maintenance to take advantage of opportunities to go see people and visit them. So it was a really nice trip, and we all, on the first day on Friday, we all had places that we wanted to go to. My parents really enjoy um, outdoor gear, and there was a nice outdoor shop. We all enjoy sushi, so we went to um, a conveyor sushi bell place, which we don't we don't have one here, in town at least. And then um, I really wanted to go to Paradise Fibers. Paradise Fibers is a um, bigger yarn store. They do lots of online shipping, and they just have bins and bins of fiber. And so I went there, and I had in mind that I'm going to first of all replace the yarn for the Gladys socks because I don't have. Um, any quantity of solid sock yarn that I could use for the Gladys socks. In fact, that's why I just cut it so close with the yarn that I was using because I didn't want to go buy any. I had to try. Um, so I got Cascade Heritage sock yarn in Christmas red because I still wanted to do red socks. I just think this is really nice. And they, I asked them to kick it up for me because I know I'd be using it. And then there is, I need to, it'll be in the show notes, I promise. But there is another general hog buffer sock that I really want to make. And it is um, just this beautiful Nordic fair isle pattern. And so I got these two skeins to make that just a really nice kind of teal emerald green and then a beige and these are also um, Heritage Sock Yarns, which is 75% um, Merino Superwash and 25% Nylon. Just kind of a workhorse, and I always have extra. And then my fiancé was with me, and he gets socks. He doesn't wear them in his shoes or anything. He feels like he's too rough, but he wears them around the house, and he really likes them. And he picked out this Trekking XXL bunch of neon shades, very cool, very um, gradient, and there's the name of the yarn. I don't know how to pronounce that. 
So those will be fun to knit. Maybe I'll make them for his birthday in September. That'll give me plenty of time to work on my other stuff. So that's all the stuff I got. I'm excited to um, finish the projects that I have, um, move on to some new ones. I probably won't cast on a third project just because I'm not bored with anything I'm working on. I'm just um, amazed that after nine years of knitting, I'm having these problems. Um, but to be fair, this Admiral's Knot halter top is my first ever garment. I've never even made a sweater. And so maybe maybe this is just what I go through. Um, Charles, we're really easy. Do you hear my parakeet? He's in the room too. I hope he doesn't start yelling, but he's very sweet. I used to knit a lot of shawls, which I felt like were pretty straightforward. Um, so I'm not as into shawls right now. I more want tops and socks and um, things of that nature. So it's just a transition and maybe it happens to everybody. So that really is it for the knitting. Oh no, that's it for my knitting and my fiber craft and my hand craft even because I haven't been working on much else. But um, my fiance now has some fiber craft that he's getting into. So while we were, he's an engineer, and while we were at Paradise Fibers, we went upstairs to this um, room with all of the spinning wheels and the fiber and the um, looms. And he went over to the looms and just observed everything, observed how everything fit together and all of the mechanics and everything. And then he um, he started asking me things like, well, what kind of yarn do you use for weaving? And how do you get started with weaving and are there any weaving classes in town and so we looked at stuff and I made a few calls and um, it seemed like he was interested in getting a little loom and then all of a sudden on Wednesday he came home and he said I bought a loom on eBay and he got an Ashford it's an Ashford table loom with I don't even know the words for all of the stuff that it has but I'll I'll update you when it comes in, but he got one, and then we went to a local yarn shop and signed up for um, a weaving class. Well, he did. It's his thing. So he's going to have four days of weaving instruction um, in the middle of June, maybe when his loom comes in, and I think that's so useful and so great, and I know there's a lot of... Um, just a lot of feeling in general that there's so much information on the internet for free that you don't really need teachers or instructors or classes. And I thought, you know, I, I figured that that would be the way that Ben would go teaching himself because he does teach himself so many things, um, just about gardening and about finishing the house and all sorts of DIY things. And I really admire that about him, but I was so happy that he signed up for a class because I think that's just a good way to set yourself up for success, especially with the big investment of a loom. It's good to just set yourself up for success, as I said. And I had two false starts when I started knitting. I think I first started knitting when I was maybe in fifth grade. I was very young and I didn't have any teacher. I just had a book and some knitting needles and I'm, oh, there's, he's yelling. Oh, you're so sweet. I had a book and some knitting needles and some dark, dark, fuzzy, navy yarn, and I couldn't see my stitches. And I think anyone, if I talked to them, could have told me, do not start with a dark, fuzzy yarn and do not start with those huge, metal, heavy needles. So I, of course, was frustrated and I didn't keep going with it. And then when I picked it up again in high school while I was um, doing theater, I had a lot of time backstage and just waiting for my part. So I started knitting and I spent six months twisting my stitches. I couldn't understand why I couldn't get like these nice lines and these nice columns. I couldn't understand what I was doing wrong and it took me six months to realize that I was um, putting my needle in through the back loop. On the knit stitch and twisting the stitch so then I finally knit correctly but that was also discouraging because it was I felt like I was doing everything correctly and I was making fabric but it wasn't looking the way that it should 
And again, a teacher could have told me that. So he's going to take a class and get some supplies and really learn the direction to go in, um, which I think is great because I'm sure someone would tell me that weaving and knitting aren't that different. But for me, it's, I can't even imagine. And it was funny to have a conversation with him and say, you know, welcome to the fiber world. Welcome to the handcraft world. But um, my stash is mostly spoken for, so we'll help you get your own stuff. And it is. I I've, everything I've kept in my stash is stuff that I will knit, um, so he'll get, he'll get his own stuff and I'll keep my stuff and we'll just make more room in the closet. So that's really exciting. I'm, I'm excited to spend time at the yarn shop with him and to talk, talk the craft with him and, um, watch, watch TV and have us all be working on our own stuff. I think it'll be fun. So that's, that is now the end of this family's knitting and craft related talks. I'm going to move on to just what we've been doing. So we got back from Spokane. We took a like a five day trip and I was really proud because I was able to pack a 10 item wardrobe and I had a bunch of unique outfits that made me feel really good. They were in colors that I loved, um, clothes that were really high quality and that I felt good in and this little wardrobe I could have I could have gone on a week-long trip I could have there are so many combinations that I could have possibly made just with these 10 items and so I really enjoyed having that and um, it was just nice to go somewhere and feel really good in everything no matter what you pick out um, I did pack a lot of makeup though so that was nice, and I might I might do a post about it, just like a general template of what I packed. It'll be different for everybody, um, and I have a very specific way of dressing that I enjoy. But it really worked for me, and I was happy to see it work. So we, one of my graduation gifts from my uh, my sister in law and her husband who live in Spokane, it was so generous of them. Um, it was a Costco membership. And I know that sounds like, oh, you know, it's not that fun. But every time we go there, they shop at Costco a lot. And every time we go to their house, it's like, ooh, where did you get this bacon? Where did you get this nice pesto? Where did you get this? And it's always at Costco. And we always say, oh, my gosh, we need to get a, get a membership. We need to actually go there. And so they gave us a membership for a year. And that was super sweet. So yesterday we, um, we went there. We went to Costco for the first time. It was exhausting. By the time we got over there, it was about 5, 5.15 in the evening, and people were getting off work and going to Costco. It was so exhausting, um, but we ended up, you know, sorting out what, what was a better deal than at our grocery store and what wasn't, and um, I feel like next time we go there, which will probably be in another month, we're going to be ready to tackle it a lot better. But one of the cool things I wanted to share that we got, um, it was really nice of my fiance to say, to let me have this impulse buy, because normally we stick to a list and normally we stick to a meal plan. But this was, caught my eye, it's powdered peanut butter. And I, I eat so much peanut butter on every, I put it in my smoothies, I put it in my, um, like over bananas and over apples. I eat it just off the spoon. I think it's the most delicious thing ever. Um, and I know it has it has good fats, like the mono, goodness, monounsaturated, polyunsaturated. It has the good fats, um, but it also has quite a bit of just fat in general. And I, I was thinking I would love the flavor of peanut butter without the, um, without all that fat and I was always looking for peanut butter flavored things but that's hard because I'm not eating processed food or you know processed this is incredibly processed this is not natural but um, I'm not eating like high sugar foods so this is just like dehydrated peanuts and stuff and um, it has all of that nutty peanut flavor and I'm able to just put a few spoonfuls into my green smoothie and it gives it that flavor. I'm sure I could mix some into yogurt. Um, 
or maybe dust it on the banana pieces that I'm eating. And it's just great. I'm so happy I found this. I think it's delicious. Um, if anyone else out there enjoys peanut butter, um, maybe without like the stickiness, the sticky mouth feel, or um, scraping it off the sides of your smoothies, this is this is a great option. And I bet you could bake with this too. I should look into that. Bake with it really easily. Um, because I just want some new food. I'm on, I won't get into this too much, but I'm on a um, kind of a healing diet. It's called the GAPS diet. But basically I don't eat, I don't eat sugar, grains, starch, no quinoa, no sweet potatoes. I eat vegetables, protein, fruit. Um, I cheat. I eat coffee. I always have my morning coffee. That's not um, that's not up for debate um, but I just eat really clean foods and it gets kind of boring because it's like eggs chicken soup bananas peanut butter fruit fish so I love I love finding new ways to make um, more exciting stuff even if it's just a matter of preparation like this this is still peanut butter but it's just different and I think that's a lot of fun so I was really happy to find that and um, yeah maybe I'll share some recipes on how I've been using it because we bought a lot of other stuff too that I've been making new things with like green smoothies and stuff like that. Um, tonight we are having dump chicken. I saw a recipe on Pinterest. I loved it. It combined all my favorite things. So basically we take um, two chicken breasts because it's just us. I squeeze a whole lemon into a little Ziploc bag and then I crush like three cloves of garlic, mix it all around, and then I put the chicken breast in for 12 to 24 hours. And it gets all marinated, it gets really nice. The garlic cloves, or the bits, garlic bits kind of um, brown up in the um, oven and we're always scraping them off the parchment paper to eat them. It's really good too. So we're having that tonight. It's Memorial Day, or it's Memorial Weekend, and it's Memorial Day on Sunday. We don't really have any plans. We're visiting family on Saturday night. One of the nieces has a play. It'll be super cute. I'm very excited. And um, other than that, we are just taking care of some wedding stuff, um, playing with the pets, hopefully getting outside. It has been unseasonably rainy here in Colorado. If any of you have any friends in Colorado, I'm sure that's all they've been talking about. I am looking out the window behind me, or in front of me right here, but behind the webcam, and I, it's sunny for the first time in, in days. We actually left Colorado, went to Washington, and had more sunlight and more warmth than we did in Colorado. And so the sun is out. We live on the edge of the golf course, and there are a bunch of golfers out there just enjoying it. I don't, they're so passionate about their sport. I see golfers out when it's drizzling and when it's cloudy and when it's gross, and they always really inspire me. So hopefully we'll get outside. We are thinking about buying a Zoom membership this year. We have lots of family coming in, of course, for the wedding. And we just want a zoo membership. First of all, it's good exercise to go to the zoo. We have um, a very hilly mountainside zoo. So um, it's a nice way to get some exercise for the weekend and go see all the animals. And as people come into town, we would love to be able to take them to the zoo um, or give them a free pass. So we're thinking about getting that. And if we were going to get it, we would probably go buy the pass on Monday if they're open and um, just enjoy the zoo that day is our first day. So we'll see what the weather's like. Um, I'm hoping to get a lot of knitting time in to um, work on my blog and start getting this community up. I Bloggers don't, not bloggers, podcasters, I have never heard them really talk about this, but there is so much set up. I have no idea what to do as far as um, making sure there's a Ravelry group, making sure that people can find this podcast, um, anything like that. They also don't talk about the fact that 
my friends and family might be very confused and very surprised that I'm doing this and I'm putting myself out here. Um, I hope I explained it pretty well at the beginning that this is, there is a community and there's a community for everything these days, like homebrewers have podcasts. So I'm just joining that. I'm totally falling into a niche. Anyone who knows me won't be surprised that this is what I'm doing with my time right now. Um, I hope it doesn't seem too weird. Um, and I do hope that friends and family who are watching it, I know not all of you are knitters. I hope you still enjoy it. And if you want to catch up with me, that you can um, find some time in your weekend to take a listen. So thank you all so much for tuning in and for spending some time out of your day with me. I hope you enjoyed this podcast and we'll come back next week when hopefully I have another one up. Please let yourself be known um, either in the comments here on YouTube or I and the Ravelry group. I did make one and I think you'll be able to find it. It's called Grace Engage Podcast. And also um, check out my blog at, on Squarespace, graceengage.squarespace.com for just some more some more stuff like this. I think I'm a better writer, especially as far as like how to and DIY things than I am a talker. But this is really nice for at least showing showing my knits in progress and being a bit more dynamic. So please go check that out. But most of all, just please let me know if anyone is watching this. Um, I will see you next week. Um, please take care. Bye.